Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephanie Bishke, and I am an events specialist at the Rutgers University Alumni Association. On behalf of the RUAA, I thank you for being with us today. Today, I'm pleased to welcome you to Introducing IDEA, the Innovation, Design, and Entrepreneurship Academy, led by Dr. Sunita Kramer and Veronica Armour. Later in the presentation, we will be joined by current IDEA students. Dr. Sunita Kramer is an educator and academic innovator. In her role as the Associate Vice President for Research and Experiential Education, Dr. Kramer brings a demonstrated commitment to academic innovation, as well as significant exper expertise in STEM. She supports the design of inclusive learning environments that bring together students, faculty, and external university partners to encourage creative inquiry. Veronica Armour is the Associate Director for IDEA at Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Veronica brings a background in education, as well as a commitment for designing with the learner in mind to facilitate guided pathways that connect students with the information they need to think creatively. She is also a PhD student at the School of Communication and Information, where she studies the nature of information in innovation. Throughout the presentation, we will be asking for your input. Please join us by participating in the chat box at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions for our presenters or for the current students, please submit them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We will do our best to accommodate as many questions as possible. For your convenience, this presentation is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Rutgers University Alumni YouTube channel. Following this presentation, you will receive an email with a link to that channel. It is now my pleasure to turn it over to Samita and Veronica. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, it's a beautiful day here in New Jersey. I hope uh, you're having beautiful weather wherever you're calling in from. I'm going to share my screen now um, and we'll get started. So um, we're really honored that you've taken the time to join us today. Um, in the next hour, we really look forward to telling you about this new initiative at Rutgers that we're calling the Innovation Design and Entrepreneurship Academy. Design is at the heart of everything that we do. And the future of IDEA really depends not just on our own vision as leaders of the program, but the vision of our entire Rutgers community. In the next hour, we'll engage in a short design activity. We'll learn a little bit about the IDEA program. Um, you'll hear from students who have participated in uh, as part of our very first IDEA cohort. And um, I hope that you enjoy the journey that we're going to take together in the next hour. So um, as we all know, life and technology are colliding around us. Our world is becoming more and more complex and technology is changing the way that we work, how we communicate and ultimately how we live. One of the questions that I think we all think about is what will our world look like in 10 years or even 20 years? As educators, how do we prepare students for an unknown future? And what will that future look like? Um, when you think about the future, does it, when, do you imagine it looking something like this or something more like this, right? We have all different ways of thinking about the future. And um, there is a new um, discipline called futures thinking that is um, becoming much more popular in the design thinking community. And it's a design practice that offers us new ways to think about the future that we're designing for in a structured and useful way. And it turns out that science fiction um, is really at the heart of um, futures thinking and science fiction and science fiction writers have provided the world with many different stories about the future. Um, and it's very interesting because in um, sort of recent times, science fiction writers have been hired by think tanks and corporations to help imagine and predict the future because they're very experienced in creating complete worlds that imagine what the future might look like. And so some of you may remember um, the original Blade Runner movie that came out in 1982. Um, and um, the inspiration behind Blade Runner came from a industrial designer named Sid Mead. And here are some of his illustrations that became part of the movie itself. Um, his passion for science fiction um, gave him the skills to design fully realized worlds, um, not just cars and cities, 
but um, people, clothing, storefronts. And um, those are all things that we all remember from this movie. And one of the questions that comes to mind when we think about this is, did Blade Runner in some way forecast the future or did it actually influence the future? Um, another example of, of, of science fiction and, and um, a possible influence on the future comes back in um, the 1960s during the original Star Trek um, series. And uh, Nichelle Nichols played Lieutenant Uhura. And at the time she was um, the first African-American woman who had an important leadership role in a television series. And um, she considered leaving her role because this wasn't her passion and um, she really wanted a, a career in theater. But um, she happened to have a conversation with Dr. Martin Luther King at an event. And he encouraged her to stay um, and play Lieutenant Uhura in this series um, because she represented a brighter vision for the future. And so um, much later as she continued her role, um, she actually ended up um, being instrumental in reforming NASA's hiring policy, eventually leading to the first black American female astronaut in space in 1992. And so here's an example of, of how imagination and science fiction can actually lead to real change in our society. And so I thought it would be fun if we could just engage in a short future world building exercise together while we're here um, in this webinar. And so um, as a warm up, it would be great if you could in the chat box, let us know um, what are your favorite science fiction novels or movies? What comes to mind right now um, as you're thinking about some of the things that we've just talked about? And so um, Veronica, if you could um, let me know what's happening. Yeah, we have um, Ex Machina, Stranger in Strangeland, Maze Runner, E.T. and uh, 2001, 1984, Soylent Green, Aldous Huxley, Her, The Martian, Ready Player One, The Meg, Parable of the Sower, uh, another E.T. fan out there. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so um, most of these um, books and movies, oh, there's a Harry Potter. Um, most of these uh, fiction novels and movies have created entire worlds where you can think about um, what people were eating, um, where did they sleep? How did they live? How did they drive around? And so um, it's really fun to think about the worlds that were created uh, through these, these movies. And I think a lot of times we end up going, um, seeking these types of entertainment because it um, helps us think about what the future might look like. Okay, so all of you um, have had some connection with Rutgers. And so um, I'm encouraging you now to think back to a time, the first time that you came to Rutgers campus. Um, you, some of you may still be on Rutgers campus, um, but some of you, this might be something that happened in your past. And so what did that feel like? Do you remember what, um, what your first experience was? Do you remember what you did, where you ate? Um, and just kind of let that sink in for a minute. And then what I want you to do is um, imagine that you're a science fiction writer and you're about to write a story that uh, takes place at Rutgers University in the future, um, in, in 20 years, the year 2041. And so what does that look like, right? Um, I'd like to give some credit to um, a futurist that I, I uh, was um, honored to hear speak uh, through Stanford University, uh, Leah Zadie. And uh, this um, exercise that we're doing is really inspired by her work. And so I've... Um, I've uh, acknowledged her here and, and I encourage you to visit her, her website. And so um, when we think about the future of Rutgers, um, I'd like you to think about what that looks like to you and what are some ideas that you have about what the future might look like and um, put your ideas and thoughts into the chat box. And to give you some inspiration, um, what, does, um, what do the buildings look like, right? What do classrooms look like? Where do students sleep? And um, how do they get around um, a monorail, right? Instead of a bus system, that's one of the first things that I thought about. Um, what do our public spaces look like? Are they um, continuous with the community that we, 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 are, we find themselves in? Um, what kind of coursework do students take? How are they taking classes? 
What are they eating? Um, what are these types of things? And so thinking about like what you might imagine as a student stepping foot um, on campus in 20 years and um, what are some things that might happen? So lots of great ideas coming in the chat. So um, Alexa enabled systems, um, full robotics department, um, major customized majors and degree programs. Yes, so students might be able to choose exactly what they want to do. Um, oh, I like that underground tubes. Um, maybe you get into a capsule and get and push a button and end up exactly where you need to be. Um, glass and open dorm spaces. Yes, a little bit more connection with our outside so that um, we can get rid of some of the um, older buildings where you have to kind of enter this concrete um, building. Sleep pods, yes, a place where you can nap instead of having to sprawl out on a chair in the library. Um, integrated workspaces, um, not much of a need to travel longer distances. That's true, right? We, we're in, in New Jersey are used to commuting a long, long time to get to work. And this past year has made us really think about um, all of that, right? Rethinking it. And maybe it's an opportunity to think about um, how we work and live. Um, classes and other campuses could be attended virtually. Absolutely. And that's actually happening now, right? So um, we're, we're going there, uh, flipped classrooms, um, hologram activities, that is very cool. Um, interdisciplinary spaces organized around societal society's challenges. Um, yeah, so something, um, places where students can directly address uh, issues that are, are happening in society. So these are all really great ideas and um, are all ideas that I think um, we can sort of imagine and start thinking about for the future. Um, collaborative activities in person and virtual versus classes. So yes, um, maybe a balance, right? Between um, when do we need to be in person and when do we need to be virtual? I think we've all asked ourselves this question over the past year as we have dealt with the COVID pandemic. Any other ideas that you might think about? How about food? Um, how are students eating? Um, self-sustained, absolutely. Um, making sure that our energy sources are, um, we're actually relying on, on that energy and Rutgers is actually making um, major investments in strides along those lines. Um, students growing their own foods and gardens within dorms. I love that idea. Um, really thinking about the food that they're eating and um, how can we be sustainable in that, in that regard. Excellent, so thank you so much for all of your ideas. Um, so let's get back to the present now and start thinking about um, what's happening right now, right? So it's graduation season and um, students in high school are graduating and thinking about their, their um, entry into college this fall. And we also have college graduates entering the workspace. So what's going on in their heads, right? What are they thinking about? Um, when we, um, we poll students, right, this is coming from a national Gallup poll uh, surveys, um, it's clear that 88% of students say that the reason they go to college is to get a good job, right? That's, that's the driving force behind why students go to college nowadays. Um, but what's interesting is that only 31% of students actually think that they gained important job skills when they completed their degrees, right? So something's not, not quite lining up there. Um, and at the same time, um, only 11% of business leaders feel that graduates have the skills that are necessary to su succeed in the workplace. And finally, 40% um, of graduates would go back and choose a different major if they could, right? So these are trends that are, are facing us in higher education. Um, how are we responding to those trends, right? It's our responsibility. I think this um, really encourages us to think differently about higher education. And um, while we still need uh, to, to rely on the classroom, I think that what we want to do is think less about um, relying on this model for higher education and rely more on this type of hands-on um, problem-solving uh, trend that will give students the skills that they need. I think somebody mentioned this in the chat box for the future of education, and that's so, so correct. We need to start thinking about that. Instead of asking kids, what do they wanna be when they grow up or asking students, what do they wanna major in? We should be asking them, 
What problems do they want to solve, right? As, um, as said by uh, Jaime Cassap, um, a Google educational evangelist. Um, so our um, vision for the Innovation Design and Entrepreneurship Academy is designed with all of these issues in mind, right? We want to help students discover what they care about most, what problems they want to solve. We'd like to connect students to the knowledge and resources at Rutgers. We wanna foster an innovative and entrepreneurial mindset. And we wanna encourage early conversations between academia and industry so that our students can be prepared for the jobs of tomorrow. And so, um, as I mentioned, we launched this program, a pilot program uh, last fall uh, during the pandemic. And um, we had, despite being virtual, I think a really great first year um, this is just an overview of what the first year looked like. Um, in the fall, we had a series of design sprints and challenges where um, students learned to ask questions and build their network. We ran a series of one credit idea seminars in the, in the spring where we connected students um, to interdisciplinary faculty research and some of the major challenges being addressed by our centers and institutes, uh, including climate change, food innovation, and then um, in, in two weeks, we're about to launch our summer internship program where we're giving students an opportunity to engage in authentic projects with industry and nonprofit leaders. Um, we're also challenging this assumption, um, an assumption that's often made in higher education that students need to know the basics before they engage in more advanced and meaningful work. And so what we're, um, we're finding from our first year is that that is not true, right? So what you see here are um, four different design challenges that our students uh, engaged in over this past year. And they did amazing work, right? So if you look at the middle one, um, we partnered with the US um, Environmental Protection Agency through the US Census Bureau. And they wanted our students to come up with ways to help the public understand the effects of emission on local air quality. Well, our students came up with this great idea to um, create a game for K through 12 to help them understand the impact of bus emissions. Uh, they called their game Clean Air Hero. And the US EPA wants to develop this game and app and feature it on their national website. And so we're uh, currently working with them to, to code this game and, um, and get it up and running. We also had a, um, a hackathon that we did with Johnson & Johnson, who are, um, is our neighbor at Rutgers, New Brunswick. And um, they have an internal um, hackathon that um, gets, student, gets uh, their employees and partners thinking about um, health disparities using technology. Um, we got a special um, exception to let our, first, our team of first year students participate in this, this process. Um, because of a partner that we're working with. And out of 27 teams, our team, the IDEA team actually had the highest scoring, um, had the highest scoring uh, result and we're working on their uh, technology as well. Um, we're also working with a, a physician to um, design um, better ways to use social media to match kidney donor and patient uh, matching. So we're doing a lot of really fun things and these are all done by first year students. And so, um, we're very excited to see where these projects will go. Um, this, this year, as you know, we've had to meet uh, weekly um, through all of our um, computers using Zoom. But um, this fall, we're excited to launch our new space that we're developing called the Hatchery. And um, the Hatchery will be in Alexander Library on College Avenue campus. It's a public space where we want to welcome our community, um, give our students a place to ideate, um, to, uh, to work on their projects. Um, and we're very excited about the launch. Um, this is a, a, an overview of what the design will look like. Um, and uh, we hope to see all of you in this space sometime in the future. And so I'd like to stop talking for a few minutes and I'm gonna turn it over to Veronica Armour. She is our associate director and um, she is going to lead us in a quick discussion with our students so they can tell you um, what their experience was with IDEA. Okay, Veronica, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Danita. Uh, I'm really happy to be able to introduce your, the students that we have here today. We've had a great group of students coming into our first year of IDEA, and the things that they've accomplished this year have impressed me so much, especially doing it when most things have been virtual and they have not yet um, been able to meet in person. And as they've noted during our weekly calls, they don't even know how tall any of us are. 
Uh, I'd like to first introduce uh, Toby Odefemi. He is a UX graduate research and design specialist with IDEA. He is one of he is a graduate student at the School of Communication and Information and also an undergraduate graduate of Rutgers in the Information Technology and Information Informatics program. Then we also have Max Handler, who's one of our current IDEA students. He is a computer science major in the honors program at Rutgers and an active member of the Rutgers Mobile App Development Club, education director for the Blueprint Product Engineering Incubator, and of course, a member of our IDEA team. And I'll let him be able to talk about how IDEA has connected him to different opportunities and activities. Uh, one of our other students we have on the call today is Vaishnavi Vera, a freshman also studying computer science with a minor in biology. She lives in Pittsburgh um, and is actually in New Jersey uh, this week. So that's uh, great to have her be able to see the campus. And she enjoys baking, being active and writing. And then we also have Fauzan, who is an honor student at the Rutgers School of Arts and Sciences, also majoring in computer science on a pre-med track. He's from New Jersey and was his class in his high school's class valedictorian. His interests include implementing artificial intelligence in the healthcare field, mixed martial arts, and keeping up with US politics. And so at this point, I will turn it over first to Toby to be able to talk about his experiences and then Max Vashnavi and Fauzan. Hey, thank you, Veronica. And nice to meet everybody. Hope everyone's having a great time. And it was beautiful to see how much people are just forward thinking about how the campus is growing. So my role is helping to develop workshops and facilitating a virtual space that allows the students to experience a sense of community, as well as learn more about experience-based design. And what has honestly just been a, a beauty to watch has been seeing the students learn, adapt, and grow, not only individually, but as a cohort over the last year. Um, like becoming more confident in taking on new academic challenges, as well as design activities. And what we have to also consider is the students were able to handle experience that's vastly different than any alum class has ever experienced before. And I'm personally just thankful for seeing that their growth over that time, that maturation, but also being able to grow skills in teaching and coordinating, um, because one of my hopes is to become a project manager. And it's great to not only be a part of the idea, but to kind of help that ship kind of grow and to see it go into fruition. Thanks, Toby, that was awesome. And the workshops um, he's done have been awesome. For those of you that might wanna check them out um, in the fall this year, check out the library's events pages where we'll have posted workshops that people could join virtually or in person. Uh, and then Max, why don't you tell us about what you've done with IDEA this year? Yeah, so I was actually a little bit lucky. I wasn't originally a part of IDEA, but I was friends with one of the older students who worked with Veronica and Sunita to start the program. So she was able to refer me and um, I couldn't be happier about my experience. Um, I, the way IDEA works is it kind of takes away the stress of having to find uh, opportunities to find. As a student, um, it's always stressful having to find an internship or uh, things to do and communities to join. But IDEA really idea brings the opportunities to you and all they ask of you is that you show up and uh, put your best foot forward. Um, and the, the opportunity that I took advantage of with idea was the black tech health hackathon that Sunita just talked about. Uh, Falzon was actually on my team and that was really fun because we, um, we were competing, not really competing, but we were building ideas alongside all these professionals who were far along in their career. And then we ended up placing first. Um, and then after the hackathon, we decided to continue working on our project. Um, and I guess I'll let Falzon talk about our project. So I don't uh, steal everything he, that he could say. Yeah, sure. I'll continue with uh, what Max said. Uh, so as Max said, we scored the highest score overall in the entire hackathon, and we were actually suggested to continue working on our ideas. We uh, had a bunch of ideas uh, on top of that when, within our presentation to the executives at Johnson & Johnson. And uh, we decided, all right, let, yeah, let's go ahead with the idea. And we did. Uh, one of our idea mentors, uh, she uh, suggested that we do Rutgers I Corps as well, alongside the idea program. And what how Rutgers I uh, I Corps works, if you haven't heard of it before, is um, it's uh, sponsored by the National Science Foundation, and you conduct essentially twenty five interviews to see whether or not your uh, product or your research idea or your innovation would work or is feasible or it would actually be wanted in the uh, in the uh, the professional field or whatever field you want to implement it in 
And we were able to actually go past 25 interviews. I believe 27 or 28 was the actual amount of interviews we completed. And what we found was that our idea or innovation that we developed through the Johnson Johnson Hackathon, as well as uh, many idea meetings uh, after that, was actually wanted in our field. And we were kind of surprised how an implementation like that was not already did not already exist in the like the app store or the android store as well so we decided all right we are going to continue with this idea now some of our ideas have been shaped by what our consumer base would want so not only did it tell us that hey this idea is wanted in our field which was such a big reliever but on top of that they actually offered suggestions uh, to sort of make our idea even better and so we're using not only the ideas that we developed the algorithm that we developed it implements artificial intelligence and we're going to sort of shape that into an application that we're building with the suggestions from Rutgers iCorps and this concurrent meetings of idea into an application um, this summer pretty much and we'll uh, further develop this application uh, uh in what is it the semester i believe is this the third semester of the um the idea curriculum which is either innovation lab or the um the uh at, at research with an academic professor so we decided to go with the innovation lab and we're going to further develop that and bring it to our consumer base uh next year and vaishnavi if you want to go ahead um, yeah, so I joined IDEA actually because um, I'm out of state. I actually live in Pittsburgh. So my mom had a condition that I had to get into the IDEA program if I wanted to go to Rutgers. That was her deal breaker. If I couldn't get in, then I couldn't go. Um, I think I've always just been a very innovative, trying to think outside the box person. I never really knew how to use those skills, though. I just knew I had them. Uh, doing the workshops that IDEA has, especially every week, the meetings, looking at the way other people think, the way they use their ideas really helped me think about what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, how I can develop them, use them. So the current projects that I'm currently working on right now is kind of to start a restaurant. I don't know where or in what format, but it's going to be, uh, the plan is to do an American Indian fusion type of restaurant. And I want it to be different because I want the vegetables to be locally sourced, have some sort of initiative that profits we get, uh, help communities around us or, you know, communities in India that need help. Um, it's kind of a mix of my life growing up, growing up as an Indian in the United States. So kind of combining my two aspects together. Um, and so for that to move forward, I'm doing the food innovation uh, summer internship this summer. Hopefully I can learn a little bit more about um, the legal stuff behind opening a restaurant, how exactly to do it. I'm also working on developing a couple recipes that I have to try and get people to taste. So that's currently where I am. I'm really excited to do it. Though. I couldn't fit the um, innovation lab into my schedule, so I'll probably just be in the hatchery a lot, but hopefully I can just develop that into something tangible and real. Okay, great. Thank you so much for sharing um, your experiences. And um, we're really proud of all the work that you've done. And um, I'm going to go back to my screen so we can continue with the uh, presentation. Um, great. So um, we're going to leave some time for questions and answers. I, I see some questions coming into the chat, um, but I wanted to just sort of close up the, the presentation piece by really talking about um, the future of idea really coming back around to what we started in the beginning, right? So um, we have several plans to grow idea and um, one of them is building community, right? So we have a lot of innovation and entrepreneurial programs that are happening at Rutgers. Rutgers is a great place for these types of activities. And what we'd like to do is create more connections and collaborations between those programs so that we can highlight all the great work that's being done um, across all of our campuses. Um, we would like to create more connections with, with you, our alumni. And so um, at the end of this presentation, we'll have ways for you to get in touch. Um, but uh, this program really depends on hearing from you and learning from you about what's happening in the world. Um, what are the jobs that are out there and how can we create an environment at Rutgers that um, prepares our students to be leaders in the field. We're also working on making connections with industry and nonprofit organizations, both locally and nationally. 
And some of you may have heard about uh, the innovation hub that's going to be built in New Brunswick. Um, and uh, we're hoping that all of this connects to that hub and um, really contributes to the innovation ecosystem within New Jersey that's growing and um, it's very exciting. We're also, um, you might've heard some of the students mention innovation labs. Um, we wanna create spaces um, both physically and virtually where students can take their ideas and really grow them. Um, we also plan to expand um, the hatchery space to um, uh, include spaces on all of our campuses where students can work um, on their ideas. And so the, the, the plan is to grow these ideas of innovation pods that uh, exist across all of our campuses. Um, we'd like to expand our, our summer internship program to possibly include students from um, all over the country so that uh, we can be known for a place to incubate ideas. Um, we'd like to increase our footprint in, in terms of graduate innovation fellows. And um, there's been talk about creating a um, accelerator boot camp and university-wide pitch competition in collaboration with the Office for Research. So um, we have a lot of exciting plans ahead. Um, we're also looking to create an innovation seed funding um, account for students uh, within Rutgers so that we can help them launch their ideas. Um, also scholarships and awards, and um, we're in talks with industry to create industry sponsors, and eventually um, venture funding for students that are really interested in launching their ideas. Ultimately, um, our goals are not to have all of our students launch their own companies, but um, we think that these skill sets that we're providing are going to be useful for any career. Um, but we also want to make sure that we create a permissive environment for our students that are very uh, committed and um, can leverage all of the research strengths at Rutgers to do this work. And so um, what about 2041? What will IDEA look like? Um, and what will Rutgers look like? And so I wanna uh, turn the screen back over to uh, Veronica, um, who has taken all of your comments and helped us think about um, what Rutgers will look like in 2041. Yeah, so as uh, everyone is putting their comments, Toby and I were working behind the scenes to create this wheel. I'm going to scroll out a little bit because we placed it within the campus of uh, uh, New Brunswick and then took your ideas and kind of put them on where we saw in the systems that it was going to impact them. If they were scientific, technological, environmental, philosophical, economic, political, social, or even artistic. And as you can see, there was a lot of ideas that hit on all of those and some of them overlap and they don't, the even with our ideas shows the interdisciplinarity of it all and that any one of those ideas is going to depend on different aspects, different majors contributing to that to be able to make it happen. Great, thank you. If you could just stop sharing your screen, Veronica. Excellent. So um, thank you for helping us build a future of Rutgers together. Um, at this point, we would like to address um, all of your questions and um, have a discussion. Um, here is our contact information. We have um, an email address for idea hatchery at records.edu. And, um, and this is my contact information, Sunita Kramer at records.edu. Um, and I'm happy now to take any questions. And if you have any questions from our students, um, I'm sure they'd be happy to take your questions as well. Great, thank you so much. Uh, we do have quite a few questions that came in. So the first one is what disciplines are currently engaged in IDEA? Yes, that's a great question. So um, our plan is to recruit students across um, all disciplines. And um, we are in the process of um, doing uh, recruiting our second cohort right now for entry into the fall. And um, for true innovation to happen, um, we need students from the arts, from the humanities, and from STEM fields and business. And so um, our ideal cohort will include students from across all of those disciplines. Excellent. Um, how do alumni who are not located in the New Jersey area engage with this program? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, we would like to engage with alumni um, regardless of where, that you, where you are. And I think that, um, please get in touch. I think, um, for example, this summer, we're running our summer internship program. Um, it's a guided internship program for rising sophomores. And the, I think the um, 
the unique aspect of this program is our students are going to be working with us. And this summer, we're going to be um, unfortunately virtu virtual, but um, by next summer, we'll be in the hatchery. This will be a residential program where our students will live on campus and we'll work with our external partners. And so imagine if you're working in another state and you'd like to sponsor a project or a function as a mentor, um, we'll schedule regular check-ins with you. Uh, virtually um, and hopefully even invite you to come uh, visit at some point. And so the way that we have things set up, um, it really encourages participation regardless of whether you're here with us in New Brunswick or, um, or across, uh, across the country. That is very exciting. Uh, we have, what are some opportunities for faculty members to engage with the students in the program here on campus? Yes, um, so we definitely encourage faculty engagement. In fact, um, we depend on it because what we really want to do is make sure that our students are gaining the benefits of all of the wonderful research that's happening across all disciplines on campus. One of the things that we did for this pilot this year was engage with our centers and institutes to create uh, one credit burn seminars. Um, we're looking actually right now for um, our next uh, suite of burn seminars for next spring. Um, but we're hoping that these connections lead to further engagement um, with um, research, right? So in terms of faculty engagement, um, you could come and give a lecture in one of the burn seminars. We could uh, schedule a, um, uh, a lecture that you can give during our weekly sessions if you're interested in sponsoring a project over the summer or even um, connecting with some of our students for more sustained research opportunities. All of those are welcome and uh, we look forward to working with you. And I just want to point out for everyone here that all of this contact information will be provided in a follow up email after this event. So you'll have uh, contact information and websites and places to visit to learn more about IDEA and to get involved. This question was posed for the students, and it is how did you hear about this program? Okay, so I can go ahead first. Um... The, the interesting thing was, is that, um, so most students in the IDEA program uh, got it through an invite. However, uh, I don't know about Vaishnavi, but me and Max found it through a rather different ways. I personally found it in like the honors program group chat, and uh, I wasn't able to come to one of the orientations. However, someone took uh, notes for me, and the IDEA program was one of there, and um, an IDEA program website was established. Um, so I looked at the website and it like sort of resonated with me. It felt like a really good program. The curriculum was amazing. And it felt like, you know, it, like there was a, 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 a rush of adrenaline if, if, for the way that I would describe it. So for me personally, it was kind of lucky that I uh, came across this uh, pr a really good program. Um, on top of that, uh, I sent an email out. So I did contact one of the, uh, the uh, I forgot who it was. I think her name was Salma. And uh, she uh, reached back to me and she you know, said that, hey, we have a spot for you on the program and you would be a good fit. So please come to our first uh, meeting. So that's how I came across the, the IDEA program. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Fazan. I think this is a good a time to point out that um, well, we do have a cohort model, we're, we're a pilot program, but our ultimate goal is to create on and off ramps for all students to get involved in these activities, right? So this is not in any way limited to the students that we reach out to. Um, we're, we're just reaching out to students that we think might be interested based on um, their high school application. But as you can see, many of the students that have um, engaged with us learned about us and that's great. Um, we want any student at Rutgers to engage with these activities. And you know we have ways for them to engage if they wanna go all in or if they wanna dip their toe in. And so um, what we're really doing is trying to increase the, um, these activities across the campus. And um, we have a very open door policy and are willing to work with students at any level. Great. Do students stay in this program for all four years and graduate with a BA or BS or does it depend on their major? Yes, yeah, so um, this is not a degree program. Um, it's rather, it's um, an experience that they have alongside the degree that they choose. And so we are designing this as a four-year experience. Um, as, you, as I mentioned, we're in year one. Um, we're starting to think about um, what 
this will look like as we continue, but what will it will depend on is um, what our needs of the students are. So like good designers, we are um, implementing and iterating as we're going along. Um, we're planning to support the students from their first year in whatever ideas that they have. Um, and we're hoping that um, as we continue this relationship, we'll learn more and more about what their needs are and how can we can how we can support them. Thank you. Um, will there be spaces on the Camden and Newark campuses to participate in this program? Yeah, so that's our vision. Um, you know, right now um, through the chancellor's office, we have um, been able to pilot this program here in New Brunswick, but um, we would very much like to um, get, be, be in discussions with the other campuses to see if there is um, a need and if there's a way that we can help uh, create spaces or help uh, bring light to some of the spaces that may already be available. And so, but the ultimate vision is for students um, on all campuses to have a space that they can feel welcome in and, um, and use to connect to um, other programs at Rutgers and as well as alumni and our industry partners. Is there a plan for this program to reach out to high schools to start cultivating the relationship before they begin applying to Rutgers? Yes, so we very much want to work with our local um, New Jersey um, K through 12 system. Um, I was actually just on a call this morning with Innovation New Jersey, um, which really thinks about um, the pipeline of um, New Jersey innovators from K through 12 all the way to some of our startup companies here in New Jersey. And I, I think that um, getting students to think about Rutgers as a destination for these types of activities while they're in middle school, elementary school and high school will be very, very key. And so um, as we develop our own students, I think um, they will make wonderful ambassadors um, to visit our local high schools, go back to their own high schools. And we're even thinking about summer programs and activities that we can do to encourage participation with some of our K through 12 partners and students across the state. Can you describe the support programs for the teams? Um, for instance, mentors or investors, advisors, just give a, you know, a brief overview. And if the students wanna give any input into their experience with those mentors too, that would be great. Yeah, so I can start really quickly and then I'll turn it over to the students. Um, we're still learning about um, all the different ways that we can support. So one of the things that we uh, make a point to do is to connect with all of the um, resources at Rutgers, right? So Veronica maybe can maybe speak to this, but has done a lot of mapping to map the innovation ecosystem here within the campus. Um, and so one of the things that we want to do is make sure that um, I think Fauzan mentioned the i program, which is an NSF funded program around user discovery. And so we want to make sure that our students use those programs because they already exist at Rutgers and we wanna support them. And so there's the internal connection piece. Um, we will rely on our alumni partners to provide some support. Um, we're also relying heavily on the New Jersey um, innovation ecosystem as well. Um, but I think that this program depends on, on those partners and those connections. And so we're in the process right now of building those out and we welcome and encourage any um, input and, and participation from all of you. Do any of the students want to talk about whether um, about their how you feel supported and and uh, where your mentors are coming from at this early point? Um, I can start. I think the first thing that I did was actually reach out to Veronica, telling her, "Hey, I think I have an idea that I want to work on. I don't really know how to start." And so I just had a quick call with her, told her like you know like a rough idea. This is what I want to do, and then she gave me her input, trying to make me think out of the box. And then she gave me a couple links from the Food Innovation Center at Rutgers on Zoom events and conferences I can go to about starting a restaurant. And those are going to start in the fall. So hopefully, when that opens up again, I can. And start going and that would be like my next step and from there it'll just snowball yeah and i'd like to jump in and one of the things with working with students over the years is the constant refrain we've heard from them is that when they have a great idea they're not really sure where to go where to start and it's not clear to them where they can go for more information 
And so if they can get hooked up with i or, you know, IDEA or any number of the things we have as a entry point into it, we can help with their pathways. And with IDEA, the idea, pun intended, the idea is to offer a front door to students to be able to have as an entry point to any of the opportunities and that they can pick and choose what makes sense for what they are working on and we'd be a resource to make sure that they know where to go who to talk to and when they can take advantage of them you know a lot of the questions we've gotten from students this year is if i don't take innovation lab in the fall is that it am i done and the answer is of course not you know we'll be offering it again but letting them know what their options are so that they can make the best decisions as they did as they develop their pathway through Rutgers. That's great. Thank you, everyone, for that input. Um, can you expand a little bit on the plans to hopefully offer this program at the graduate level? Yes. Um, one of the goals um, is to of, of idea is to um, stimulate innovation at all levels, right? So um, our graduate students at Rutgers are engaged in um, cutting edge research with our faculty members and. They provide, um, not only provide a great resource for our undergraduates in terms of mentorship and um, setting examples for some of the work that they're doing, but we'd like to do a lot more in terms of connecting them with our um, industry partners, as well as um, encouraging them to think about their own ideas. Um, I think the, the, the important part there is going to be working closely with faculty because our graduate students obviously have um, thesis work to do and um, I think creating a partnership of um, how we can empower our grad students to um, explore their own ideas, but also um, complete their, their degree requirements and contribute to the research that's happening on campus. Excellent. We have another question. There is a large presence of FIRST robotics in New Jersey. Have you involved them all in IDEA or do you plan to or hope to? Um, I think yes. So um, we have not reached out yet uh, to that organization and um, to all of the, the individuals involved, but um, absolutely, we, our goal is to really connect heavily with the New Jersey um, innovation ecosystem. And I think one of the reasons why um, this program is unique in the country is because of um, all the exciting things that are happening in New Jersey right now. We are uh, geographically and um, just in terms of all of the things that are happening in the state are really well poised to connect our students to all the wonderful work that's happening and also support our local, um, our local entrepreneurs as well as industry in creating a workforce pipeline. And so this program will depend on those connections and um, we welcome any suggestions um, and uh, introductions that you may have to uh, get us going along the way. Excellent. Are there any other Big Ten schools that have a program like IDEA or that we can work with? Um, was this modeled after anything specific or are we kind of leading the way here in the Big Ten? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think that there is a trend right now um, across the, the country um, and even actually nationally to, to start thinking about innovation and design and entrepreneurship. And how that fits in with um, the undergraduate and graduate experience on campus. So we are certainly not the, the only ones in this space. Um, there's, there are leaders in um, at Michigan, Northwestern, um, you know, Berkeley. I know those are um, outside of the Big Ten, but um, University of Maryland also. I think that um, what we'd like to focus on is what makes us unique um, and how can we leverage what we have going on here at Rutgers um, and in, in the state. And I think um, we've been really focusing on building connections, um, working with our successful and unique alumni um, and, um, and also our faculty research. And so it's really triangulating um, those three things. And I think that will make us stand out um, as a destination for the kind of work that's happening here um, at Rutgers New Brunswick. Wonderful, thank you. How are you integrating accessibility and the needs of those with disabilities into the new models for higher education? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one of the things that um, we're doing in terms of the hatchery space and the, um, the library, um, one of the things that's happening in the library is the, the uh, rollout of the new digital learning commons. 
Um, and that um, whole space is designed with accessibility in mind. Um, and so we want to make sure that um, our, our physical spaces, as well as the work that we're doing, um, reflects the diversity of our community, but also is accessible to all of the students uh, that are participating. One question that we've gotten many variations of from lots of people is, how can I help? What is the best way that our alumni, our staff, um, affiliates of the university can help? Yeah, so that's that's a great question and a million um, dollar question. We right? were hoping that you could you would ask that question. And so, I mean, I think the best way is for us to have a conversation and um, learn more about um, your interests and um, and maybe answer some more questions on a on a one to one level. So you know, please reach out to um, the email addresses, whether it's um, one of us directly or or, or the idea um, email itself, which we'll share with you after this. Um, and we'll get back in touch with you and we'd love to have a conversation about um, your ideas. Um, as we mentioned, we need you to help build this because this is a community shared vision effort. Um, and it's, it's, uh, we're, we wanna think about the future of Rutgers. We wanna think about um, how we can lead in this space and we're going to rely on all of you um, who are out in that space to help inform and, um, and guide some of the decisions we're making. So we look really forward to working with you and please, please get in touch. Um, so I think we'll, we have one more great question that I think is uh, a good way to wrap up and it was posed to everyone here. So if you could all think of a, an, an answer, that would be excellent. We can kind of go round robin here. And it um, is just, what do you see in your own future, whether it's in your own future, uh, your education here at Rutgers or much like looking at Rutgers 2041, what do you see ahead for you? Sunita, if you don't mind, I'll put you on the spot <laughs> first. <laughs> um, well, I really see, um, you know, for Rutgers, I think we are on um, an upswing. I mean, we started out um, in a great place, but I think that um, when you think about our, uh, our COVID response and all of the great work that's happening right now, I'm just so excited to see where Rutgers can go and, um, and how we can help with idea to, um, to move it in that direction. And so I think what I see in the future is um, Rutgers rising in the rankings and um, for everyone to know about the work that we're doing. Great, Veronica, maybe I can go to you next. Yeah, so I think mine, my thoughts are a little bit more focused close to the pilot and where we'd see being able to see it growing to be able to include our Camden and New York student, students, not just to be able to engage with those campuses, but being able to see our summer experience for those internships grow where students get to work, not just with New Brunswick students, but get to work with students from the different campuses to the, for the different perspectives that they see and being able to continue to grow this program and take advantage of the phenomenal research that um, is going on here and being able to take advantage of what Rutgers does really well and how they're contributing to a lot of different areas. Uh, how about Max? What do you see for the future? Um, I honestly don't know what's coming in the future. I'm excited for the future. Um, I want right now me and Fauzon are building an app um, to help that's using our machine learning to help solve the issue of infant mortality. So I want to see if we can actually make a legitimate impact, um, like expand it from being a small side project to actually having a real impact and maybe even turn it into a company. That's my main focus for this summer. Um, after that, my goal is just like, um, to land a job at one of the big tech companies, but that's in the future. So I'm just focused on, uh, on that project right now. That's great. That's, it's an exciting project. It's a good place to focus. Uh, Toby, how about, how about you? I think for myself, I'm so excited to see how this iteration of idea transforms from the online platform that we have to the in-person and coming up this fall. Um, not only do I get a chance to kind of continue my own education and hopefully graduate by next May, but also give me a chance to like get back in touch with the campus. Um, I was with the campus in undergrad. So one of the things I love about Rutgers is like you feel the life as soon as you step down on the campus and you feel so much connection to the student body as well as the faculty and staff. So just getting that rekindling is something I'm so looking forward to. 
as well as growing some more skills so that when I do graduate, I can look into new horizons of program coordinating and something that fits my alignment. That's great. I'm looking forward to campus being back too, full swing. You're right, you can feel it on campus when everyone's here and excited. Uh, Vaishnavi, would you like to give us your, your thoughts on the future? Um, well, when we graduate, get a job, you know, the typical college life, and then uh, on the side, I really want to start multiple ventures in my own. I don't want to limit myself to just one career path. Like uh, Veronica's honestly been such an inspiration because she told me once about like not having to feel restricted to one specific career. You can literally do anything you want. Uh, so I hope to go towards my passions a little bit more. Um, also a lifelong goal of mine has been to start hospitals in underdeveloped regions of India. So that is a very big goal. Hopefully that'll happen. So I think those are my life goals. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. And uh, last but absolutely not least, this was in no particular order. Fazan, would you like to take us home yeah. here? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, my vision for the future is just like Max. We want to finish the application and try to make a real impact on the world in our specific uh, issue that we found. But other than that, I would like to add two things. One, I look forward to working with other students in cross-disciplinary fields. One thing that I learned through IDEA, as well as the sort of team that we're working with in developing the application, is that sort of the diversity of like our different interests being aligned when we were creating this application. So like I'm a computer science major, Max is a computer science major. We have a bait major as well as, I'm mean, someone that's currently undecided. However, he's really good at design. And just the sheer diversity of the our interests, our passions came in line when we were developing this application. So I really do look forward to working with other students in uh, different fields and hopefully making an impact given our similar passions, but diversity in our majors or respective interests. And the second thing that I'm looking forward to in the future is working with future IDEA students, as uh, Sunita said, that they're, we're working on a uh, the next cohort. So I do look forward to working with them and seeing um, what type of impact they have on the world. Thank you so much, everyone. I think this is the perfect, hopeful, uplifting note to end on. Sunia, did you have any final thoughts? I know I'm just um, really delighted to be able to spend some time with you today. And um, I look forward to hearing from you uh, after afterwards. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you our, to our speakers for being here on the behalf of the Rutgers University Alumni Association. Just wanna thank all of our attendees and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you.